Here's a few more things to know about C++ arrays and that is that if you'd like you can have an, a shortcut of putting values into variables of an array so that instead of needing to specifically go through each of the variables in an array and assign it something just like this over here we can do it all in one shot in an easier manner. By the way the real C++ word for variables inside of an array is elements. So this array over here has 20 elements, all of type char. This is the first element of the array, this is the second element of the, the array, this is the ninth element of the array, etc. So instead of filling up all of the elements, each one, one by one, like this, you can do them all in one shot, but that's only possible at the creation of the array. So right when you create the array, right over here, when you type char my name and you give it the amount of elements you'd like it to have, right over there you continue with the equals with the assignment operator, then you add a opening and closing brace and inside of those braces you can start typing the specific values you'd like each one of the elements to have. In this case, for example, I would type A and B and C because they are characters, make sure that you separate each one of these values by a comma. Besides for the last one, which doesn't need it because it's right before the end of the initialization. And of course you finish it all off with the semicolon. Right over here what this does is this sets my name 0 to A, my name 1 to B, and my name 2 to C. Again, this is only possible at the creation of the array, so if you want to set the rest of the elements, you'll have to do those specifically, each one, one by one. Or, if you'd like, you can do it all together at the creation of the array, right after the assignment operator. So this is how you would fill up a array of characters, this is how you would fill up an array of integers by typing up the numbers, and the same thing for any other type of built-in variable. When I say a built-in variable type, I mean all those very basic variable types like integer and float, not classes which you yourself create. You won't be able to do this trick over here if you're creating an array of your own type of class like the ogre we saw in the other video. You won't be able to do that as easily as we can do that with char or int. Here's another thing to know about C++ arrays, and that is that you can create, so to speak, two-dimensional arrays, and even three-dimensional arrays, or how many, however many dimensions you'd like. What I mean is, it's like you can create a grid of 20 by 20 integers right over here. And what happens over here is that we created 20 times 20 arrays of integers. So it's as if we pretty much created one array of 400 integers, except that we can think of it as a grid of 20 by 20 integers. So if you'd like to access the specific elements of this uh, array, of this two-dimensional array, you will have to provide two sets of square bra brackets, and you will have to specify exactly which column, so to speak, and which row, so to speak, um, of specific element you'd like to use, and then you could start using that specific element however you'd like. So right now this line over here accesses the integer variable which is at the 8th column, so to speak, which is at the 13th row, so to speak, and that specific variable will right now have the number 9 inside of it. You can have, of course, any amount of rows, any amount of columns, and of course you can have any number of dimensions. And during the creation of such, a var of such an array, you can easily fill it up with values with the same trick we saw previously using the braces, separating the numbers by commas, and to make things clearer of which bunch of numbers belong to which column and row of this array, you can add more braces which will make things clear that uh, of what you intended, which numbers should go into which column or row of this array. Just make sure that you separate these sets of braces by 
commas themselves. So right over here, the first five elements of the first row will have the following numbers. The first element will have 1, the second element will have 2, the third element will have 22, the next will have 87, and the next will have 78. And that's it for the first row. The second row will have the following order. The first element will have 1, the second will have 2, etc, etc. I'm just running through this very fast because hopefully you won't be using arrays so much because they are a little dangerous. They can crash your program easily and are a big source of bugs in many programs. But if for some reason you really need to use arrays, then watch this video again and listen carefully to all the details I mentioned. For now I just want to introduce a very important variable type which was created by the standard C++ programmers and it's in the standard library. And we're going to start off by including the following header. So include string. Just include this header file called string just like we included IO stream. And this header string has a very helpful class which we can use if we want to have variables which have not numbers but actual words or as it's called in programming terms strings. The string variable that we are going to be using is also in a package called std which is inside this file string so it's a good thing that we still have this around using namespace std. Now that it's all set up let's create a standard variable of type string. I wouldn't really call this a variable anymore. Variables are usually what we call the basic types like integer and char. Other complicated classes like the string or any other classes which you make aren't really called variables but rather whatever classes or objects or something like that. As you see in my compiler the word string doesn't turn blue because it's not a built-in type it's a class which was created by the standard library but it works just like any other variable so we are going to make a string called x just like we always made an integer called c or whatever using instances of the class string is very easy if i want to put a whole bunch of text inside of this variable x all i have to do is assign a bunch of text inside of uh, assigning it to this string object just as much as I would have a variable of type integer which I would give it 5 I now give a whole bunch of text inside of this instance of the class string and that's it right now my string called x right now contains this text over here anti rtfm and to be sure let's try to print that out on the screen we're going to print out this object x and see what we get. Compiling, linking, and there's our program, anti-RTFM. There we go, a very convenient type of uh, object, type of class, of variable, which allows us to easily handle text as easily as integer handles numbers. So now we could easily do something like this. Create a string x, print out hello, what's your name? and then we will await the user to type in something and using the extraction operator not like this one over here we will cause whatever the user will type in to be inserted to be assigned to our string variable to our string object and then to make sure that it works we're going to print that ver that object x to the screen which should pretty much print whatever the user typed in let's see that working my link. Here we go. Let's try it out. Hello, what is your name? My name is anti RTFM. Enter. Your name is anti RTFM. Very good. We successfully created a string variable or a string object. We asked the user to type something in, and we took whatever the user typed in and put it inside this string object, and then we printed out that string to the screen. If we open up the string header, we see again a whole bunch of classes and functions that uh, the standard programmers have created. Looks pretty complicated, but basically it enables us to make our string objects and use it pretty, pretty easily like I just showed you. So if you ever need text variables in your program, you should probably use the standard string.